Hello, I'm Harold Jones, Dean of the School of Health Professions at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Thanks for joining us today for another discussion in our continuing monthly series where we interview experts in our school. These experts are leaders helping to shape the future of health care through tailoring innovative solutions to real-world problems. Joining us today is Stephanie McGilvery, an assistant professor in our Surgical Physician Assistant Program. Along with her teaching duties, Stephanie works as a clinical physician assistant for Pegasus Emergency Medicine Group. For several years, she worked as a physician assistant in the UAB Trauma and Burn ICU and at Alabama Sports Medicine, and was also an athletic trainer prior to receiving her physician assistant degree. Stephanie currently serves on a committee for the American Phys Academy of Physician Assistants. Stephanie, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Physician assistant, that's a term that many people may have heard but may not really understand what it means. Tell us something about the physician assistant profession, about what the educational requirements are for a person in order to become a physician assistant, and a little bit about the curriculum uh, that a student goes through as part of physician assistant education. Uh, physician assistants, we are health care providers uh, that are uh, take care of patients each and every day. Uh, we practice under the supervision of a physician, however we still have a lot of autonomy and can take care of patients essentially by ourselves. Uh, as a PA student, uh, the curriculum involves, it's uh, very vigorous uh, in that uh, it uh, takes them about 27 months. The first year is all didactic uh, information and the last uh, year is um, where they go out and do clinical rotations. Physician assistants are oftentimes lumped in among individuals or groups of people that are called physician extenders. What does it mean to be a physician extender and what are the roles that a physician assistant actually plays? And are there any limitations on what a physician assistant can do since they say that a physician assistant practices medicine? Physician extenders usually is defined as kind of a, it's kind of a catch-all phrase and it incorporates everybody that works in the physician's office. It can include medical assistants. It is one that we as physician assistants have typically tried to stay away from. We want to be recognized more as mid-level providers working under the supervision of a physician. Our role in the healthcare team is one of which you will find physician assistants in every facet of medicine. Um, I've got colleagues in all forms, even dermatology, oncology, uh, emergency medicine, and all of the surgical realms. So that's just to give you a few examples. Um, but um, as far as the clinical role, a physician assistant can see patients in the, in the office just as a physician would. About 80% 80, 80 of what a physician can do, a PA can do. So it gives you a little bit of an idea of what a, um, what a PA can do, about 80% of, of the physician's role. Uh, as far as the limitations, we are limited typically by what the physician our supervising physician wants us to do and allows us to do. We are also limited uh, by a couple of other factors, one of which is what a physician assistant feels comfortable doing. I mean, as far as their training, if you've done more of treatment of certain areas, you're going to feel a little more comfortable taking care of those patients. And then the last thing that typically limits the physician assistants in, is the state laws. The governing body typically at the state level usually your board of medical examiners that uh, the physicians answer to and they limit our um, by, by our, the laws that we practice under. There are a number of studies out there that show that there's going to be uh, an anticipated uh, large growth in the demand for physician assistance over the next decade. Uh, what are some of the factors that are driving uh, this increased need and demand for physician assistance? there's going to be a huge physician shortage. Uh, the physician shortage, I uh, read an article in the paper a couple of weeks ago that as far as the primary care physicians, there's probably by 2020 they're looking at about a 45,000 uh, deficit of physician shortage. They're also seeing deficits similar to that in all of the surgical realms as well. So for a physician assistant, they're looking for somebody who can fill those voids. So as a physician assistant that works uh, as a team mate with that physician, 
uh, you can essentially double the number of patients you see. So um, it's the role of the physician assistant, they're definitely looking for us as mid-levels to fill that void. It's my understanding that admissions processes are quite competitive for students trying to get into physician assistant programs and that if you look across the country it's almost that way in every place. There are more qualified applicants than there are actually slots in programs in order to accommodate them. Yet there's this also this disconnect in the sense that we're not taking in all the students that are qualified and yet there is a huge demand out there for physician assistants. What are some of the factors that limit the number of students that we can take into a physician assistant program here or that other physician assistant programs can around the country? Well, you are correct, I think, in saying there are probably more candidates that we could probably accept each year. And yes, we probably do have the classroom space available. But the second year they go into clinical rotations and physician assistants are trained in all the core realms of medicine, pediatrics, OBGYN, family practice, internal medicine, uh, general surgery, uh, and psychiatry. So the more students you have, the more rotation sites you need. And it is already difficult and challenging to find preceptors currently out there in a lot of those realms that are willing to teach our students. Uh, and teaching, they are giving of their time and energy uh, and essentially for what they promote is for the profession and that's sometimes hard to convince somebody especially with the addition of electronic medical records where their time is already uh, probably as crunched as it could possibly be now you've got a student chasing you around that you're supposed to educate and prepare for the for being providers in your state so I think that's probably the biggest limiting factor that we see. Our physician assistant program here has traditionally been a little bit different from most of the other programs across the country in terms of its emphasis. Could you tell me about those differences? Most of the programs in the country are a primary care based program or are primary care based in the way they train their PAs. Um, UAB has typically always been kind of a surgical basis and it stemmed from when Dr. Kirkland started the program. He saw the huge need in, uh, in the surgical OR and needing help and so he kind of coined that and that's how the UAB program kind of grew. So they are trained a little bit more intensively as far as being surgically prepared to go into the operating room and assist the surgeons in that realm. However, at the end of the day, what we're turning out is a physician assistant in our program so they can practice in any realm of medicine. It just uh, allows for them to have a great surgical background if they so choose to go into that practice. You know, we discussed uh, earlier the uh, projected needs uh, in the physician assistant workforce. Are there any programs or any plans in place to expand the physician assistant training here at UAB? Well, uh, the course, uh, we just admitted our largest class here, uh, the class of 2014 has 60 students and that's the most they've ever admitted um, and will continue to admit the 60 um, realm. Uh, there are plans for a primary care track. We've submitted uh, I think uh, paperwork to our accrediting body. Um, hopefully that will allow us to have um, uh, allow more students into the program even and uh, train them with a more of a primary care emphasis. So in that regard, they would, uh, once they hit the clinical year, we're developing new sites that rather than where they do approximately 12 to 16 weeks of surgery on their clinical rotations, they would do a little less of the surgery, still getting a general surgery component, but they would have a little bit more uh, leeway as far as the primary care role, and they could do more um, family practice, internal medicine, geriatric medicine, those are some of the areas that we're looking at expanding all of that. Stephanie, thank you so much for sharing your expertise and your experience with us and helping us get a better understanding of physician assistant education and the physician assistant profession. Thank you so much for inviting me today. To learn more about our surgical physician assistant program, please visit their website at uab.edu slash surgicalpa. 
If you have any questions or comments about this topic, please feel free to contact us at uab.edu slash shp slash contact. And while you're on our website, be sure to learn more about our school. Once again, thank you for joining us. I'm Harold Jones, Dean of the UAB School of Health Professions, where we're shaping the future of healthcare through tailoring innovative solutions to real-world problems.